Well, meanwhile, we're seeing more reactions to the latest blitz of legislation making its way through Congress. Now, to further discuss, I want to welcome South Carolina Representative Nancy Mace to the program. Hi, Congresswoman. Thank you for having me today. Welcome back. Hi, good Thank afternoon. you. It's Thank nice you to so have much. you. <laughs> of course. So um, I want to get your reaction to legislation that uh, just passed in the House yesterday. Democrats unanimously approved a bill that would make D.C. the 51st state. They argue that it would enfranchise the more than 700,000 people that live in the area. Do you agree with that? Oh, 100% absolutely disagree. And we had a very heated debate on the floor yesterday regarding D.C. statehood, because if you oppose it, you're racist, which could be the furthest thing from the truth. What we can't do is oppose the, the Constitution and the form of government that our founding fathers put in place, which was a balance of power. But what we're seeing with Democrats in the far left, the radical left, when they don't get their way, this is they're trying to have more power in Congress because they, they want to pass this radical socialist agenda. And we're pushing back and we're fighting back very hard. Um, I've also seen a group of Republicans unveiled a, a counter offer to Biden's sweeping infrastructure plan. They uh, cut the price tag on that. It's down from the two trillion to about a 560 billion. Uh, they narrowed it down the focus as well to focus strictly on things they consider infrastructure like roads, bridges, airports. Now, Biden has said that he wants a bill that Republicans would support. Do you believe that that's true? Well, we've heard a lot. We've seen, I've seen more damage done in the first 100 days of the Biden administration than I thought possible in four years. We've heard a lot of talk about unifying the country and working together in a nonpartisan way. But to date, it just hasn't happened yet. And there are Republicans. This is a place on infrastructure. This should not be a Republican or Democrat issue. This should be a place where we can work together. But imagine just for a moment that we put an infrastructure bill together that actually has to do with roads, bridges, planes, and ports, and not the Green New Deal. And that is where we should be working right now on this infrastructure package. And what the Senate Republicans put together yesterday and presented is about a quarter of the price tag of what the Biden administration was proposing. No tax hikes necessary to pay for that package. Well, and then I want to dig a little deeper into that. The second part of Biden's infrastructure plan, it has items uh, related to economic recovery. It's another trillion dollar proposal. Now he's calling it the American Families Plan, and it would do things like extend the child tax credit through 2025. It would expand paid leave and child care. But like you mentioned, it would, it would raise corporate taxes to pay for it. What are your thoughts on that? It seems like every week there's a new billion dollar or trillion dollar boondoggle coming out of the Biden administration. The only way we can afford these very expensive packages, these uh, liberal spending wish lists that we're seeing right now, the only way we can do it is to raise taxes. And they're talking about taxing the rich and having corporations pay their, pay their fair share. All that might sound good to people and sounds great, but it's a horrible idea, especially in the middle of a pandemic, because hardworking Americans are going to end up footing the bill. There's no way around it. There will always be loopholes for the rich and corporations. And so hardworking Americans will end up footing the bill, and that's untenable. And they're talking about $7 trillion of new spending just in the first six months of this year. I don't know how you sell this to the American people with a straight face. All right, and you, you mentioned the pandemic, so I wanted to finish off with this. I've seen reports that uh, COVID vaccination rates are falling in some parts of the country. Uh, people just aren't going out and getting them as quickly as they were when the initial rollout happened. Uh, it's prompting some states even to stop ordering more doses. Uh, does that concern you? Certainly it does, but in talking with healthcare leaders here in South Carolina, you have about a third of the population that will, will be able to, that will get their vaccinations right away in the first 30 days when they have access and the ability to do so. You have another third that will wait two or three or four months before they go out and get theirs. And then there's another, the last third are those that have some vaccine hesitancy. And this could be for health reasons. Um, th this is for a number of reasons. And so we've got to give it some time. I know that in many states right now, like in South Carolina, 
everybody has the ability to get vaccinated. I had a really horrible case of COVID-19. I'm a long hauler. I just got my first vaccination a week and a half ago, and I'm told that that for those that, that had a bad case and that, that were long haulers, that they can improve, their health can improve after being vaccinated. So I'm encouraging folks to talk with their physicians to make that decision. It's a personal decision that everyone should have the freedom to make themselves in accordance with and along with their physician and get the best recommendation to protect themselves and their families and our communities. And so states like South Carolina, Florida, we've done a really good job of balancing health and safety and keeping people, keeping our numbers down from COVID-19 and getting back to work. And that's really essential to the future and, and encouraging great economic opportunity in the future. Yeah, and like you said, getting back to normal. I just got my vaccine yesterday, my first one. It feels like I did a couple push-ups with my left arm, but feeling okay so far. Congresswoman right. Nancy Mace of South Carolina, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thank you.